Vegans is a lifestyle, but it's certainly not for everyone. If you want to be considered amongst the few people who are truly living an elegant lifestyle, there are certain things that show that you are not an elegant person, and these are things that you definitely should avoid on your level up journey. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you 15 things that show that you are not an elegant person, and if per adventure you do one or more of these things, it's time for you to stop so that you can be considered an elegant elegant person. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, now would be a good time to join this community. We are all about leveling up and becoming the best version of ourselves. And if that's of importance to you, then you definitely should join the community, okay? I have so much more in stock for you all. Now let's go to point number one that shows that you are not an elegant person. Point number one that shows that you are not an elegant person is when you are overly posting every single thing about yourself on social media. Social media is public zones. As an elegant person, you want to be living a private life to a large extent. Now, this is not to say that you shouldn't post things on social media, but be very mindful of the kinds of things that you post on social media. So for example, things that look like you are showing off or you're trying to prove to someone that you can be something or you can afford to buy something or you can afford to go somewhere with something. Things that come off as a bit braggadocious. I still don't get the people who have a bunch or bundle of money and maybe sitting on their bed or on their in their car or on the table somewhere and they take a picture of the money and they are posting on social media that's not elegant or you go to a store and maybe you bought yourself a new pair of shoes um a new pair of clothing and you're posting it on social media and, and you're saying oh new shoes i can afford new shoes new that um i deserve this this is my my this is my new collection. Nobody cares about the shoes that you purchased. If whatever it is that you're showing on social media is not something that inspires someone to aim for better in their lives, if it's something that you're doing just to show off or to prove to someone that you can afford this or you can be that and all of that, then as an elegant person, you have no business showing off those things. Don't use social media as an avenue to deal with your low self-esteem issues or your insecurity issues because truth of the matter is that most people post those things, most people post things that show off, most people just post just to make people have an idea that they are living an elevated life. So posting that those things does not really bring you true satisfaction. It doesn't really bring you true fulfillment. You just want to prove to people who don't care about you that you can afford a lifestyle that you, maybe you truly can't even afford. So try as much as possible as an elegant person to be mindful of the things that you put out on social media. Just wear things because you want to wear them, not because you want to show anybody anything, okay? The second point that I've put down here is somewhat connected to the first point, and it's about sharing too much info and flaunting your wealth. Now, this one may not necessarily be done on social media. This one can be done everywhere with people around you. So you go somewhere and you are just flaunting your wealth. Do you know who I am? Do you know how much I'm worth? Do you know what that is? Maybe someone steps on your shoes. Do you know how much I bought those shoes? Don't do that. Don't be overly flaunty of your wealth. We get that you are wealthy. Truly elegant people don't say a word about their fame or their wealth. They just allow the wealth speak for, speak for them. And then too much info can be in you sharing information that no one's asking you for. So you are in a conversation with someone and then, for example, you want to talk about how you traveled to, um, maybe you traveled to Spain, for example, and you're like, oh, I took the first class um, seats to Spain. People were, ugh, no need for all that TMI. Do you get no need for it? Just no need to brag about your achievements. No need to brag about your 
your wealth, no need to brag about your fame. Let those things do the bragging for you. It should never ever come out of your mouth as an elegant person, okay? Another point that shows that you are not an elegant person is when you do not take care of your health. When you pay no attention whatsoever to the state of your health, you are not concerned about what goes into your body, because a truly elegant person knows that whatsoever they put into their body becomes one with their body and translates into their physical figure. So if you are an elegant person or if you want to be considered an elegant person, then you should be paying attention to your health, the quality of the food that you eat, your mental state, the quality of information that you take in, What's the state of your mental health? What's the state of your emotional health? As an elegant person, you shouldn't be exposing yourself to toxic people who have no good to offer you. What's the state of your spiritual health? You have to look at your health from a holistic point of view. So you're particular about your physical health, your spiritual health, your mental health, and your emotional health. Don't eat anything and everything just because you have a mouth and you can put you have a hand to put the food inside your mouth. No. Be mindful of what you put in. Be mindful of um, your physical activities. Get enough rest. Go to bed on time. Exercise as much as you can. Eat healthy meals. I have a cookbook here called Winnie Sizzling Selections. Now, for those of you who do not know, I'm actually also a culinary expert and I have a second channel called Delicious Foods, where I show you how to cook different dishes. And I recently just released my first cookbook called Winnie Sizzling Selections. It has over 100 recipes, and it's the cookbook that you need to level up on your healthy eating journey. So you definitely should get a hold of this if you're very particular about improving the state of your health physically. I'm gonna put a link in the description box down below on how you can order a copy of the book. So a truly elegant person is very mindful of the state of their health and does everything possible to ensure that they're always in the best state possible health-wise. The next point on my list is one that I have seen a lot of ladies do. Oh my God. And I literally cringe anytime I see this happen. Now, I guess what? I've seen this happen even in the most civilized places ever. So people who wear hair nets and hair bonnets in public, how? How would you, for example, you say, oh, you're waking up in the morning and then maybe you're driving your kids to school. You're doing kids drop off and you're in the car with your hair net or your hair bonnet and you think no one is looking at you and you think you'll be considered an elegant person or you say okay you're going to the store down the road and you're wearing your hair net and your hair bonnet some people even wear these things to the airport i've seen ladies wear these to the airport how that's not elegant don't do that don't do that always ensure that your hair is in good clean condition and you can invest in wigs even if your natural hair is not in good condition invest in good quality wigs or you can invest in a face cap or they are nice cuffs and you can tie on your head in very stylish ways that still shows that you're elegant but never be caught with hair net and hair bonnet in public that's an absolute no-no if you want to be considered a truly elegant person. The next point that I've put down here on my list that shows that you're not an elegant person is when you lack basic manners. You don't know how to say thank you. You don't know how to use the word please. You don't know how to apologize when you do something wrong. You lack basic table manners. You lack basic communication manners. You just are very mannerless in all forms, in every form, fashion and shape. And then when you, you are overly like very loud, you're very feisty. Let me put it that way, feisty. An elegant person is gentle, calm. An elegant person is respectful, kind, considerate, compassionate of others. So when you lack basic manners that show that you are refined and polished, you definitely cannot be considered a truly elegant person. The next point here that shows that you are not an elegant person is when you are 
a disorganized person. So a person whose house, you come into their parlor, their kitchen, or you go into their bedroom and you literally want to run away because everything is out of place. Nothing is organized, nothing is clean, nothing is well arranged. You even go into their car and then you're wondering, was World War III just fought in this car? Everything is dirty, misplaced, disorganized, nothing is put in the right place. That doesn't show true elegance. This is how far, like, this is how far I take this elegance thing. One day, someone offered me a ride, right? We had, we were just done with a meeting or so, and I came to the meeting in an Uber. And this person, I met this person at the meeting and offered me a ride because we were going same way. And I was like, okay, okay. I was, I was a little bit um, skeptical about going, but I said, okay, okay, because I really didn't like the person's um, physical appearance, and that's the truth. So when I went with the person to his car, and I saw the state of his car, I said, you know what? I had to quickly say, you know what? Oh, I have to wait for someone. I can give an excuse because I didn't want to be found in that car. The car was smelly, dirty, dirty with lots of things in the car like ah, ah, that had no 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 business in the car i literally had to run away and of course i started to look at that guy it, I, was, I was already looking at him a, a, a funny way but after experiencing the, the the way the state of his car i knew that now nah, found this is definitely not an elegant person so an elegant person always ensures that they are always organized. Everything around them is organized. Their environment is clean and organized. Their car is clean and organized. And they as well are clean and organized as well. That is when you will truly be considered an elegant person. Another thing that shows that you are not an elegant person is when you make every event a photo session. Like you go to a new restaurant, everywhere is picture perfect. And the next thing you bring out your phone, oh, let's take a selfie. You're looking for the best background. You're looking for the best everything. You want to ensure that you have the, like, you are literally spending 30, 40 minutes taking, trying to get a good picture because you came to somewhere that you probably have never been before. That's what I call, I call them people who are photo thirsty, photo thirsty. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't take pictures when you go to a place, a new place, but there's a very thin line between taking pictures for memory keepsake and you're taking pictures because you are overly obsessed, like, ah, you're like, I don't think I would ever come here, let me get all the pictures. You want to take like three, four shots of different angles so that people would think that you came at different times. Like, it doesn't even make any sense. So yeah, there's a five minutes, like take some time, two, three minutes, take a picture with your family and friends and that's it and put your phone away and focus on what you came there for. But when you make every single thing a photo session, you go for a wedding, you are taking more pictures than the bride and groom themselves. You go for a, a meeting, you're taking more, like, don't make everything a photo session. Don't make everything a photo session. And even if you must take pictures, don't make the picture taking and events like don't make it into a theme just take your picture stop and move on don't make it so obvious that you're even taking pictures so much so that the management of wherever you are will come and be asking you you are distracting everything and distracting everyone by that picture taking that you're doing so an elegant person is not one who is very photo thirsty one or two pictures fine and then you move on not the one you're trying to take a hundred selfies in one clothing keep clothing. the next point that shows that you are not an elegant person is when you always are on ashy skin now what's an ashy skin you might ask you know that skin that's always looking very whitish and dry that's an ashy skin your knuckles your knees your where's your knuckle sorry your knuckle your elbows your knee <laughs> Your feet always looks very white and dry, like you didn't moisturize, you obviously didn't moisturize. Now, sometimes some people can actually moisturize their skin, but they suffer from severe dryness. It's actually a condition called severe dryness. It means that you have to actually go the extra mile to moisturize and ensure that you always stay hydrated so that your skin will not always look very dry. So when you have dry knuckles, dry skin, it just has a way of making you very dull and it has a way of making you look very unkept. 
So as an elegant person, you need to pay extra attention to your skin health and ensure that you moisturize, especially if you suffer from severe dryness, okay? The next point on my list that I've put here that shows that you are not an elegant person is when you have very poor communication skills. Now communication, not just verbal communication, but texting communication. And for this particular point, I really want to focus so much on texting communication because I've seen a lot of people make terrible mistakes when they're texting. So for example, like I put some example here, when you want to say thank you or thanks to someone, instead of writing it in full, you are writing T-N-X. What does that mean? Or you are writing T-A-N-K-S. What does that mean? Or you want to say good morning to someone and you're writing G-U-D-M-R-N. Why? Why? And then when you even want to write the G-U-D-M-I-N, you start your letter G with a small, your, your letter G is in the lower case. It's not in the upper case. Why? That's not a good way to text as an elegant person. I've also put things like when you want to address someone by their name in whatever sentence you want to make while you're texting and you don't use um, the uppercase to put their, the first letter of their name. Like for example, Emeka, you put the, cap, the letter E in small as a small letter instead of making the letter E in uppercase or putting it in uppercase. Does that make sense? So you have very tacky communication skills, whether verbally, you don't know how to communicate correctly verbally. And then text-wise, you are always using abbreviations and slangs to communicate. That shows that you are definitely not an elegant person. An elegant person understands the importance of communicating correctly, whether verbally or through text. You have good structure in your text when you use writing features like paragraph, you are using the right punctuations at the right time. You're using your full stops, your commas, your question mark, where you need to use them. You're using space where you, where you need to use them. Instead of clumping and just putting all of your words together in one place. True elegance requires that you pay attention to how you communicate, whether verbally or via text. Okay? The next point that I've put down here that shows you are not a very elegant person is when you don't pay attention to detail. And you know a person who doesn't pay attention to details in so many ways. You can tell from how they dress, you can tell from how they speak, you can tell from how they basically do pretty much every and anything. So as an elegant person, it's important that you pay attention to the tiny little details that you think are invisible invincible to the eye but trust me people can see it someone who doesn't pay attention to detail would have very cheap nail polish and go around with it and not really care what anyone thinks someone with poor attention to detail will not be concerned about the state or condition of their jewelry and how it matches their overall appearance someone who doesn't pay attention to detail would always can easily be caught in a, in a disorganized or have a disorganized environment. So paying attention to tiny little details, even in the workplace, when you're given a task or an assignment to perform, pay attention to those tiny details that you think um, are insignificant, but trust me, are not. Because those tiny details are what actually makes you excellent and what makes you be put together as a person. The next point that I've put down here that shows that you are not an elegant person is when you lack depth and substance. So under this category, you find that this person has no hobbies whatsoever, no ambition whatsoever, no interest whatsoever. You lack the ability to be spontaneous sometimes, to be adventurous sometimes. You are just like the, like the, that's what your life is, like the. Nothing excites you, nothing interests you, nothing appeals to you, you are not passionate about anything, you are just the, just want to exist as a the. You're not elegant. An elegant person has hobbies, things that they're excited or they really love to do. So for example, I personally, one of my major big biggest hobbies, people say it's not a hobby, it's actually work, but I, I call it a hobby, I love to read. I love to read. It's something that I'm so passionate about. I can read with the crowd around me 
alone, in public, in private, on a plane, on a bus. I will read any and any weird that I get the chance to read because I love to acquire knowledge. That's something I'm very passionate about. And that's actually what led me to um, decide that I wanted to be a cookbook author. I'm also going to be an elegant coach author soon. I'm working on a book for my elegant people. Yes, because I believe that information is power. I also love to go horseback riding. I love to be on a horse and mount a horse and just ride on the horse. It's something I'm also very passionate about. I'm also very passionate about nature. I'm passionate about how the sun shines, how the moon does its thing, how the stars shine, how the wind up does its thing. Like I'm passionate about the trees. When I'm looking at the tree, I'm wondering how does this tree function? I'm just passionate about something. But some people are not passionate about anything. And then of course, if you follow my other channel, you know that I also love to cook as well. Cooking is something that I'm super duper passionate about and have made a career as well. So an elegant person has something that they are passionate about. It can be fashion, it can be makeup. You are enthusiastic about something. You are Something brings you alive, makes you feel alive and well and gives you some form of energy. What is that thing? You need to find it out for yourself so that you can truly be considered an elegant person. Person, okay. The next point on my list that I've put down here that shows you are not an elegant person is when you're drinking from a bottle or a can or a pack. Drinking directly from a bottle or from a can. Let me give you an example, right? So I have a bottle of water right in front of me. Doing this or doing this. Which one is more elegant? I'll leave you to be the judge of it. Which one do you think is more elegant? I also have a can of drink here in front of me. This is actually a drink I've been taking since we started the episode and I've been using a straw to drink it. So imagine I was drinking this drink like this. Or I'm actually drinking it like this. Or using a glass to drink it. Which one do you think is more elegant? I'm going to leave you to be the judge of it. And that's all I'm going to say on this point. The next point that I've put down here that shows that you are not an elegant person is when you are overly nosy and never minding your business. When you want to poke nose into everybody's matter, but your matter. Mind the business that pays you. Stop being overly involved in other people's business. That's wasting your time, your energy. It's just wasting everything about yourself when you're just so concerned and overly invested in people's business. An elegant person is truly about themselves. They're truly about their growth. They're truly about their development. And what happens with anyone else is not necessarily their business unless they want to be a part of uplifting and improving and increasing the person. So don't be overly nosy. Don't want to know what is happening in your neighbor's house or what is happening in your friend's life. Focus on what's happening in your life. Focus on your focus. Stay on your lane. Don't be nosy and mind the business that pays you. An elegant person will never ever be caught minding someone else's business or being overly invested in someone else's life for no just reason, no good reason at all. The next point here that shows you're not an elegant person is actually a sister to the last point that I just made, is when you are overly a people pleaser. You want to please everyone in your way. You want to please everyone in your life. You can't satisfy everyone. You can't please everyone. And if you find that you're pleasing everyone in your life, and you're doing it successfully, there is certainly something wrong with you. You cannot successfully please everyone. And people who are people pleasers are people who I like to think have very low self-esteem issues, who lack confidence and don't know when to say no and create a good boundary for themselves. And people who don't understand the meaning of putting a premium on their lives. So don't be an overly people pleaser. Of course, do things for people and be there for people, but know when to draw the boundary, when to draw the line 
and when to put yourself first, okay? I have a last point here, but I also have some bonus points that I must include at this point because I feel it's also very important for me to share those bonus points as well. So stick around for that. The last point that I've put down here is when you're overly pressuring and wanting things done on your time. Life does not exist. Okay, well, life exists because of you, if I'm being honest. But remember that life exists because of other people as well. So wanting things done on your time, when you want it done, how you want it done, is the definition of selfishness. And elegant people are not selfish. As an elegant person, you have to remember the rules of elegance. You have to be respectful, considerate, and compassionate with everyone else around you. So don't insist on having things your way, done your way, how you want it done and when you want it done. Remember to be very considerate of others as well if you want to be considered an elegant person. There are three bonus points that I'm going to give here that also shows that you're not an elegant person and I'm just going to rush through them. The first bonus point here is when you have terrible, bad body hygiene, you lack proper care of yourself you don't know how to take care of yourself you don't know how to take care of the things that help you look good and smell good so someone who has a terrible bad body odor cannot be considered an elegant person so always be very mindful and conscious of the way that you look and the way that you smell as a person if you don't like how you smell trust me how would you expect other people to like how you smell? And sometimes some people have gotten so used to their bad, terrible odor that they don't even know or think it's offensive. So what I like to do, I've even done this myself. What I like to do as a person is, I will look for a person around me and I will tell them to please smell me at different times. This was when I was just starting out in my elegance journey because I actually wanted to be sure that I always smelled good. And I will tell them to smell me to let me know if my sm what I smell like is, is, is not offensive. And when they do and they give me their feedback, I take the feedback and I apply it to my life as well. So I think it's something that you can do because sometimes you can have a very terrible odor, especially if you live in this part of the world, Nigeria, where it's always really, really hot all day long. Ask someone to come close to you and give your body a good smell and then figure out or decide and let the person, and be, when the person gives you their honest feedback, better take it <laughs> don't feel offended take it okay <laughs> the next bonus point that i've put down here is when you're overly sex thirsty you always want to have sex morning sex afternoon sex night sex calm down relax your life is not all about sex sex does something to your body if you don't understand the psychology of sex go and read you should be reading books Acquire knowledge on certain things so that you understand how certain things that you, you think are pleasurable or th you think are just, I'm just doing it. How it's affecting your life in serious ways that, you, that you, you cannot even comprehend with your mind. Go and read up on the psychology of sex and understand how sex works. Don't be an overly sexy person, sex, sex thirsty person. And don't have multiple sex partners. If you understand sex and how it affects you, you will be careful, you will be careful how you have sex with people, Kai. And then the last bonus point that I've put down here is overly wasting time on things that don't benefit you. You people that spend all your years and hours and moments on social media looking for what's not looking for you, why? One advice that I'm gonna give my elegant people is this, especially those who find the need to always be on social media. Be more of a producer on social media than a consumer. Don't be the one overly consuming other people's content and you are not producing content yourself that is also adding value to the world and adding value to yourself. My most of the majority of my work is social media, but I have a limited time that I can spend on social media a day. You will be amazed when I tell you the amount of time I spend on social media a day. So don't waste time on things that don't over, that don't benefit you in any form, fashion or shape. Like minding other people's business, pocketing on other people's matter, doing things that adds no value. Your friend wants to go for this party. 
you are there. You want to go because you're like, okay, I don't have work that I'm doing. Let me just go to the party. You follow your friends to the party. You spend hours at the party. By the time you come back, you're drained. You're exhausted. There's like you are. You are just. <clears throat> when you first calm down. <laughs> so an elegant person does not waste time on things that do not benefit them. Now, those are all the points that I have to show that you are not an elegant person. And if you're watching this video today and you find that you can identify yourself with one or more of these points, it's time for you to level up. We're not judging you here. This is a community of level uppers. Everyone at some point decided that it was time for them to level up their lives and become the very best version of themselves. So if this is where your journey starts, I implore you to give it all of your attention. Be willing and eager to go on this elegance journey because trust me, elegance has more to offer you and you have literally nothing to lose when you choose elegance as a lifestyle. All right, family, I'm gonna see you next time in another video. Until then, remember to stay elegant.